Well, uh, we're in this uh, series like we call Rooted, and we're in week three, and week three is called Prune, or I'm going to say pruning. Um, you know, a natural part of organic relationships with God is the process of pruning. And we don't like to think of it that way very often, but as you're going to find through this, this sermon today, it is very much so a part of pruning. Just as a plant is healthier after pruning, as a relationship and growth as a Christian, it's, he it's healthier through that per uh, pruning. Experiencing growth when unhealthy areas of our lives are trimmed or thinned away, though this process sometimes can be painful, it can hurt. You know, if a plant feels pain, I don't know, they say no, but you know, having your branches cut off can't feel real good. But I liken it to just trimming your, your fingernails. That, that doesn't hurt. But it, we need to do it, or we should do it. Right? So think of it that way instead of actually pruning in the sense of, you know, chopping a hand or an arm off. Though this, like I said, this process can be painful, let's look at it as it's not painful. As, you know, a follower of Jesus, we must see God's work in our lives as something that has what? Our best interest in mind. And it's for His glory. His glory is at stake for us to be able to take those prunings that they're necessary. God is the divine, listen to me, God is the divine gardener who has our spiritual growth as His ultimate goal. God wants to see us grow. It's important to Him. And it should be important to us to grow deep roots that will sustain us through anything that we face in life. Again, think about that psalm that I read earlier. When I, you know, Psalm 46, where it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. During those burning signs, that, and then the next verse 2, he says, therefore we will not fear, even though all those other calamities are going on around us. We should not fear. That's what he says. And that's what this is about. You know, it's so important that, you know, to grow, that anything that we face in life, we must receive acceptance, guidance, and love as a branch receives from a vine. We must make a conscious decision to welcome God's pruning in our lives. I want to say that again. It's so important for today's message. We must make a conscious decision to welcome, listen to me, welcome God's pruning in our lives. Because it is not always pleasant. Sometimes it hurts a little bit. You know the difference between a good news preacher and a preacher like we are, I am? I preach the whole truth. I don't just tell you the good pieces. All the lovey-dovey and the hugging and loving part of the scripture. It's important that I teach it, but that's not all I teach. Why? Because if you are not prepared for the pruning, then you think something's wrong. And indeed, nothing is wrong. Everything is right. Can you see that? How important that is? If we go into the, some, in our situations in life and, and we say this is punishment, then we've got it all wrong. No, it's development. Yeah, praise the Lord for that. That he doesn't excuse us from that. Think of Peter when he denied Jesus three times. What happened to him? He felt he was disgraced. He, he felt he was no longer worthy to follow Jesus Christ. So he went back fishing. What did Jesus do? He went back following him and went back to get him. And when he meets him, you know, Peter's excited and he jumps off the boat again, swims towards him, can't help himself. Peter, the emotional guy that he is, races towards him and then Jesus says, Peter, feed my sheep. That hurt. He's pruning. He's pruning. Didn't feel good to Peter. Then he says it the second time. Peter's going, oh, ouch. Feed my sheep, Peter. Then he says it the third time. And Peter breaks down, doesn't he? He breaks down and says, Lord, you know I love you. You know I love you. 
And Jesus looks at him and says, then feed my sheep. And he never, ever, see that pruning was the final pruning Peter needed to ever leave him again. But that was pruning and it wasn't pleasant for Peter. And it won't be always pleasant for us. Listen to what it says about pruning. Well, look first place. Last week we talked about what? Growth. And how important it is to grow. And that we all play a part in that process. And this week we're looking at the aspect of growth called the pruning, pruning growth. And listen to how pruning is defined. To trim a tree, shrub, or bush by cutting away the death or overgrown branches or stems, especially to increase, listen, fruitfulness and growth. Wow. Like many aspects of our faith journey, pruning isn't always easy as we just talked about, it, but it's necessary, listen to me, necessary in order for healthy new growth to occur. Listen, Grace Journey Community Church has gotten to the point where we put a team together after John left us and said, okay, what do we do now? What do we do now? Where do we go? What's it going to look like? We didn't know. We prayed to the Lord for guidance as we put it together a transition team and we discussed many different options that we had as a church. And when we decided that we wanted to merge with the church, we had an idea in our minds what that church that would merge with us would look like. We pursued one church, the first church we pursued didn't work out. And then we met a, a church that in 2019 was interested in talking with us to merge with us as a church. In 2019, just so you all understand the history, was what? We were looking for a pastor. We weren't talking about merging. That We were in the middle of hiring John Alexander to be our pastor. And so we told that pastor, Pastor Nathan, well, we're not, we're, th thank you, appreciate it, but we're not looking to merge it. We're looking for a pastor. Quick forward, four years, and what happens? He finds out that we're looking to merge with somebody. Bethany happened to be going to that church. Mark and Evelyn go because they're doing a graduation celebration for Bethany. He brings up, now listen, Pastor Nathan had emailed me when this first started, and a couple of pastors did. And all I did is send them back a message saying, thank you so much, you know, please be in prayer for us. But right now, we're, we're just in a holding pattern, and I'll get back to you. Well, I didn't get back with any of them. And, and, you know, eight months later, I forgot about it. So Nathan already approached me to remind me, hey, listen, I'm here. If you need me, I'd like to talk to you. And, uh, and so he mentions, you know, Mark mentions, you know, that we're looking to merger. So Mark comes back and says, hey, he's still in here. He wants to talk to you. I said, okay. I gave him a call. The rest is history. Now, See, we voted, they voted, we're going to merge. Yeah, praise the Lord. They have 70 members, we have 30 members. We're going to, we're going to be a healthy church. Nathan is doing exciting things. Pastor Nathan is doing exciting things in his church and around his church. We've been over a year and three or four months now where we've been in a holding pattern. That's not a healthy church. That's not a healthy church. But he's coming in here, and he is on fire. <laughs> he is. He's, he's excited. He's excited, and he wants to get things done, and he wants to see things being done, and, and, and I'm excited for that. And I hope you are too. But I want you to equate it to what I'm talking about today. We, we have been pruned. We've been pruned for the last year, year and a half almost. We've been pruned back. <coughs> and now... Right now, starting February 11th, I hope, it works out that way. The worst it would be February 18th. But I'm going to stick with February 11th because I know that's what Nathan wants to see happen. So we're going to make it happen. We've been proved back. And now, in February 11th, is when we 
with the soil has all been made right, the pruning is going to be done, and we're ready for growth. And we're going to talk about that next week in our, our final service uh, on the series of rooted. But now we're ready to go. We got the right soil. We got the right seed. We've been pruned back. Now we're ready to grow. I'm excited about that. And that brings me to, you know, uh, the, as I said before, that pruning isn't always easy. What we've been going through in the last year and a half has not been easy for you or for me. You know, I all, you know, all of you know I love to preach when I get the opportunity, but I am not a full-time senior pastor. It's not the way God packed my bags. He's given me the ability to do it during the season that he had for me to do it. And I, and I I'll always look back at this time with deep affection that I could lead a congregation and walk us through a difficult period. But I look forward to what's going to happen. I'm looking forward, not backwards. And I pray that we will be doing the same thing. Go, but please read as we dig into this scripture, John 15, 1 through 5. You can find it, uh, you know, the NIV uh, sample. But we also have a few Bibles in front of you on the chairs, uh, page 901. If you don't have a Bible, you're welcome to keep those Bibles. If you need one, uh, that's an ESV translation. <laughs> John 15, 1 through 5 says this. I am the true vine, and my father, listen to me, my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you cannot, you can do nothing. Nothing. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Please be seated. I am so excited. Does this not, does this not make pruning clear to you? This message, this, this passage in John, it is so clear. Let's pray before we really start to dig into this scripture. Oh, Lord. Uh, we all, Lord, I know I do, and I, and I pray each and every one of us here do, desire to grow in our relationships with you. God, you know, please search our hearts, know our minds, and remove those things that will cause us harm. May your divine work in our lives cause us to be faithful followers of Jesus. May our roots grow deep into your love, the good soil, and give us a solid foundation for our lives. And Lord, if it needs to be, if things need to be pruned away to prepare us for your way, Lord, I pray that we are open and offer ourselves to you to be pruned. Lord, I pray that this week that, that we would each spend a little time saying, saying this, Lord, please prune me. Prune us. Lord, that prayer should be from us, each individual. Prune me. Prune me where I need pruning. Take any dead branches away from me. Lord, make me strong and make us grow in our faith with you. Father, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> My first point today is God's got a lot of green thumb in him, doesn't he? We find that in John 15, 1 and 2. Where he says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Mr. Green Thumbs. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Take it away. It's not, it's not, we don't need that part. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. So it will do what? That it will be even more fruitful then. Sometimes it doesn't feel good to get pruned. But he's doing it. If we look at it the right way and say, Lord, thank you for that pruning. I hurt a little bit. But boy, I'm looking forward 
two, have you ever seen the plants that you prune? You prune them and then they grow stronger and, and deeper. If you, listen, I don't know if any of you have ever grown an avocado tree. But if you plant a tree from a, a, a seed, it grows one stop and it goes straight up 30 feet. Well, first, there's two problems with that. One is it doesn't have a lot of bush and branches. So it doesn't produce quite as much fruit when it gets to maturity. But even still at 30 feet high, the big winds and stuff come and they, they just crack the tree over and everything else. I remember my parents had a beautiful avocado tree in their backyard. And dad parked his car next to the avocado tree in between the houses to keep it safe during a hurricane in Miami. And boy, the hurricane came through and that avocado tree slapped right down on top of that thunderbird. Boom. Dad was not happy. We don't have an avocado tree. It's got a mango tree, but not an avocado tree. But what I'm trying to say is, if you prune that avocado tree back, let it grow 10 feet, maybe even 15, and then cut it down, about 4 feet. You know what happens to it? A lot of people are going to say, yeah, it dies. No. You know what happens to it when you cut it 4 feet? I, I should have taken a picture and and brought it into you because I, at my house I have an avocado tree, avocado tree that I just cut back like two years ago. And that thing is not growing straight up anymore. It's like a big old bush. Big old bush. Branches growing out all sides of it. Didn't grow straight up from the middle. It started growing up all around the sides. And it's now a good bushy tree. And I look forward to when it starts bearing fruit in another year or two because it's going to be shorter and fuller. Think, I want you to think of yourself like that. God prunes you back. He can let you grow for a certain amount of time. And then he prunes you back. Boom, boom, boom. You know, about a year and a half ago, I got pruned back. Boom, boom, boom. I always said, no, I don't want to be a pastor. I'm not going to be a pastor. don't want to be a senior pastor. God made me to be the assistant pastor, to be, come alongside somebody who needs somebody like myself because I'm retired. Some are retired because right now this is a full-time job. <laughs> um, but retire from the workload I'm on Social Security, right? And I say, you know, I want to come alongside, help somebody that needs help, that's either bivocational, you know, especially that needs somebody that they can rely on to be here, to be here for the congregation. Somebody gets sick in the middle of the day, if, if you've got a full-time job, you may not be able to get off. You're not that flexible, but I can. And, and so that's what I thought I was there for. But what happened? God threw me back and said, no, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. I want you to step into this. And I'm going, no, 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 not me. And he said, yes, 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 you. I'm, I'm pruning you back and you, you're now ready. I want you to do this. I want you to step in and get our con my congregation, because the church is not the building, it's the people. He says, I want you to stand strong for them and for me and represent me for as long as it takes. Well, let me tell you, when I first started this, I'll be honest with you, I said, we're going to do this for about six or eight months. That's what I told you about. Well, six or eight months, that's it. We, I can do that. I can hang in there and hang on. Well, God had other plans. And by the time we do this in February, it's going to be close to a year and a half. But you know what? I told you in the beginning, when I look back on this period of time, I'm going to say, Lord, thank you for that opportunity. Thank you for the difficulties that you gave me. The heartache that you gave me. The good, the bad, and the ugly of, 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 of Lord leading a church and trying to transition a church. All of it all at once. But that's God. That's what this is all about. The first thing that we have to remember is Jesus makes it clear that He is the vine. We have to, I could have not have done this on my own. I had to stay close to Jesus. To God, I had to pray to God and say, "What do you want me to do? How do you want me to do this? What you know? Give me strength." Just as all the nutrients needed to for a plant to grow and travel through the roots to the limbs and the trunk to the stem, all need we all need that for life. We need life to be full, and it comes by and through Jesus, only Jesus. <clears throat> the second point here is what. The one who is responsible for cultivating the growth in the lives of people is God himself. There is no other being who is more qualified to oversee
see the growth process than the one who is the author of life itself. Amen? Why don't we trust him in our time of need and trouble? He's the creator of it all. How can we not trust him? There's two incredibly important things to keep in mind as we talk about pruning. It's critical to remember who is be, who is behind it, right? Who is behind it? Who's doing it? The creator. The divine gardener, Jesus Christ, listen, has the bigger picture in mind. Listen, Jesus knew when Bill stepped in. Jesus knew when Bill stepped in to lead this congregation. He knew where it was going to end already. He knew how long it was going to be and everything else. He knew. Let me, let me, he didn't tell me. I wasn't privy to that information. And a lot of times we are not. But all I can do, all we can do, and we did, is stay faithful. Stay faithful to the gardener, to the, to the Lord, and say, Lord, it's okay. Listen to what it says in Romans 8.28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of what? Of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. Amen. Brings me to my second point. The gentle art of elimination and cultivation. Think back to our definition of pruning, to trim a tree, a shrub, a shrub, as I explained to you, that avocado tree, if you trim it back, it's much better. It bears much more fruit. Overgrown branches and stems that are reduced back, they increase fruitfulness and growth. One of the main jobs of a gardener is to remove dead, fruitless, or broken limbs from a plant that keep, keeps it healthy. Often a plant will be hindered by the dead portion or branches that cause dead portions, you know, to get, get in the way. Sometimes a plant will waste, even waste energy and nutrients to help those branches that don't produce anything. They're trying to save that branch. We need to prune it. It doesn't need to be there. It's taking time and energy away from the plant. If our life, as in our lives, we often have similar areas that, are, that hinder us. It may be sin that needs to be removed. It may be discipline in our lives that we need to accept. It may even be something good in our lives that is distracting us from something, listen to me, something greater. The gardener will prune these things so that, that we might have a better opportunity to grow. You all know I love to fish. I really do. I love getting out on the water. I love fishing. Well, you know, I haven't been on the water in about three months. And then sometimes I look at this and, say, and I say to myself, oh, man, I've got to get out. And then I say to myself, no, because the days I normally try and get out are on Mondays. Uh, so that's, that's kind of like my unofficial day off. And Monday comes around, like tomorrow, the weather's horrible. I'm not going fishing in horrible weather. So I can look at that and say, why am I feeling upset because I haven't been able to go fishing? God obviously doesn't want me to go fishing right now. He's taken that away from me. He's saying, no, Bill, don't worry about fishing. You're going to get plenty of that in and, you know, lay down the road when it's time again, when I can go, you know, two or three times a, a month, if, if weather permitted. He's saying, no, you don't need to be occupied with that right now. I have other things I want you to focus on. And I, should worry, and I should not worry about that. I, I should be interested in why this is happening and understand that he may be pruning me back for healthier growth. Just imagine how much more, you know, that the divine gardener and cultivator of the entire cosmos is interested in the same thing with each and every one of us. He is. Brings me to my third point, which is talking about pruning Less can truly be more. The pruning that God does in our lives is not because he is angry with us, although that can happen. But normally, pruning, the process of pruning, is he's not angry with us. And, but he, want, and he doesn't want to punish us. Actually, he is, it's quite the opposite. It is. According to Hebrews, 
There is a race that has been marked out for us that results in a heavenly prize. Listen. In order to run this race, we have to be removed. We have, he has to remove those things that will disqualify us from that race or hinder us in our race. Because we won't be able to reach the finish line. Listen to what it says in Hebrews 12.1. He says, therefore, since we are, listen, surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off, get rid of those branches, of everything that what does what hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Amen. Amen. See? Can you see it now? That's why pruning is important. Get rid of that stuff. Don't let that stuff in. Don't let it hinder you. God wants to prune that away. He wants to take those branches out so you don't waste, waste time and energy so that you can run that race. But listen, this is not always easy and it's not always comfortable. But in the end, as these things are removed that aren't healthy for you and for us, we find something more from life than we could have ever known had we not been pruned. Bringing me to my fourth point, a healthy connection to the vine will do what? It will produce good fruit. John 15, 5. It is so important. What does he say? I am the vine, you are the branches, of you remain in me and I am in him. He will bear much fruit. A part of it you can do nothing. That's what he says there. A Christian is someone whose strength comes by living in connection with Jesus Christ. Listen to what it says in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. He says this. He speaks about nine fruits or products of the Spirit that should be part of our lives. But listen to this. 5.22 and 23 says this. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Think of a moment about the fruits listed in Galatians, in this Galatians text. You know, like I said, it's so important to understand this. These are areas that most every believer has some desire to grow in. There is something in here that I talked about. The fruit of the Spirit is what? There's, there's got to be things in your life that you need to be more joyful. Listen, my wife talks to me about that all the time. You know, somebody does something in the car, my car is my worst enemy. God, God needs to get me out of the car. <laughs> You know, when I'm riding in the boat, I don't have any problem. I'm riding in the car, and then somebody will do something silly, and I'll go, ah. Just like that's what I do now. I, look, believe me, I've come a long way. God's threw me way back. <laughs> there was a time when I did, did, would, would celebrate with a, a, a single salute to somebody. Now nah, it's off. And she goes, why do you let that bother you? <laughs> I say I'm not what I was, but I'm still not where I need to be, Right? Because I should just let it go. That's their problem, not mine. I told you about that card that my wonderful young nephew, uh, William, gave me. And it says, for every 60 seconds of unhappiness, or, or, yeah, for every 60 seconds of madness or angry, being angry, you lose one minute of happiness. So you're letting that person take away your happiness. You can't let them do it. You can't, you, you know, you just, you just can't. In, in competition sometimes, we get that way, we get all bundled up because we're in competition with somebody else. It doesn't matter which sport it is, I flew air, radio control airplanes in competition. And, and boy, I tell you, there's been times when I have been really mad at scores, and I get scores on the maneuver, each maneuver got a score. And I remember one time at Masters Academy, and, uh, and uh, not Masters Academy, but uh, Masters uh, show that I was invited to for aerobatic competition. One judge gave me a zero on a tail slide, the other one gave me a seven. Wow, well, you know, after I landed and everything and I got my scores, I said, you know, listen, both of you give me a three or a four, or you know, or give me a zero because it either was a tail slide or it wasn't. And a tail slide was just the airplane goes up and you stall it and it comes down on your 
find the tail. Now, any movement down, there's not a set amount. It doesn't have to be a full airplane length. Or, there's no criteria. It just has to start down. And then eventually you have to turn it because you need to recover. Uh, so it's right onto the ground. But anyway, how can one person see it as a zero? Well, I went up there and I was all upset. I'm going, you know, if you had a picture of it, you'd be go, you know, you see those little movies where you're going, right? Because I was mad. Why? Because it didn't make sense to me. But you know what, in the big scheme of things, it, it doesn't, it didn't matter. And it doesn't matter. And, and I, today I look at that and I say I'm ashamed that I would get so upset about it. You know what, it is what it is. In other aerobatic competitions, if a judge gives a zero, he has to consult right after that person lands in IMAC competition. He has to consult with the other judge and they have to agree on the zero. But in this competition, international competition, they didn't have to. Well, I don't have any control over that. And, and I shouldn't have got so upset, but I did. And this is the kind of the pruning that has to take place in each one of us when we do something like that. So we have to have a healthy connection with that vine, that vine. So that's why I say think for a moment about things in this thing, in these, in these words, that need, you need to pay a little bit more attention to. You know, whether it be joy, peace, patience, I could have used all of those at that moment when I was up there going, ah, 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 you know, but trying to argue my case. We need gentleness, self-control. I was out of control. Ask you that. I was out of control. I was not happy. You would not have been happy with Pastor Bill, but this was before I got saved. But still, you would not have been happy with Pastor Bill. Okay? I was not showing a good sign. I wasn't being a good Christian at all. But he says, against such things there is no law. These fruits, you know, we need to live them day by day in our lives, and we need to remain connected to Jesus through the full surrender and unwavering faithfulness. We remain connected. The divine gardener prunes away the unhealthy and, and the fruitless parts this is me, of our lives. Remain in Him, he says. Remain in Him through adversity, through trial and hardships. I'd like to think today, if the same thing happened to me, I would approach it differently. I was reading an article yesterday. There's a show on, probably most of you don't know what it is, it's called um, A Reacher. There was a movie about Reacher, Tom Cruise played it. But this is a series called Reacher. The guy who plays Reacher is a Christian. And people are getting down on him because the character of Reacher, although he's a good guy, is a little brutal about going about getting justice. Okay? Now, as Christians, and he professes to be a Christian, they're down on him for the character he's playing. And like I said, he really is a good guy. The beginning of series two, listen, I'll tell you, this will explain it to you. In the beginning of series two, he doesn't like to settle down anywhere. And what happens? He goes to the ATM to get some cash and a lady standing in front of him. And you can see she's visibly shaken. She's got a little blood on her hand. And Reacher, being the kind of guy he is, looks around and he says to her, stand right behind her. He goes, you've been carjacked, haven't you? And she goes, and he goes, he looks to his left and he says, that's your being over there? And she goes, because well, she don't want to look or act like she's talking because she's worried. Her daughter's in the car. And this is what she says to him. My daughter's in the car. You know what Reacher does? He simply walks over there like nothing's happening, wraps a cloth around his fist, punches through the glass, pulls the guy out, slams the door on his head several times, disarms him, and leaves him on the ground, turns around and starts walking away. She's yelling, and she's standing there with her daughter in her arms, and she goes, who are you? And he says, somebody that doesn't want to get involved. <laughs> All right. Now, is he a bad guy? <coughs> he's a little brutal, but he's not a bad guy. And for us as Christians to condemn him as an actor for playing a part, I don't understand that. He's trying to earn a living. We have to live in a business world that's not accepting to Christians sometimes. And we have to bite our tongue sometimes. Does that make us a bad Christian? That kids, when you go to college, you're going to have to bite your tongue sometimes because they're going to teach heresy in colleges a lot of times today, right? We've all been through it in the workplace, in schools. 
And there's a lot of times you think, I'm going to be reaching right now. So that I can just take care of a few things. But we don't. And we're not. But to condemn, what my point is here, to condemn somebody for playing a part, which in essence is really a good guy just going about it probably, you know, not lawfully, but, you know, it's make-believe. It's like Harry Potter. It's make-believe. You know, should we condemn it? You know, should we worship it? No. That, that's when we cross the line. But, you know, it's like looking at a cartoon. Listen, Captain America's not real. Spider-Man is not real. Is it wrong for us to look at Spider-Man and say, ah, that's cool. You know? No. We need to be real in our lives as Christians. We need to be approachable. We need to be, you know, good Christians. We can't talk to people if we isolate ourselves completely and say everything is wrong. And, you know, look at me, I'm Mr. I'm Mr. or Mrs. Goody Goody Two Shoes. And, you know, that's unacceptable. No, well, come on. We need to be real. We need to be real, just like the disciples were real. Peter grabbed the sword and chopped the soldier's ear off. Growth in faith takes intentional effort, fierce determination, and an unquestionable grace of God. It is true that God loves us just as we are, but it is equally true that God doesn't want us to stay where we are. What are some specific areas in your life that could use some pruning to allow for healthier growth in you yourself? What are some areas that need to be completely lopped off? You know, a dead branch in your life for the sake of the future, for the sake of future growth. Are there areas in the past that you know and recognize that God pruned the way in order for healthy new growth to occur? I hope you have as many of those as I do, for God has continually pruned me back to help me to be where I am today. And I am nowhere near, as I told you about the car experiences, I still am afflicted and still need pruning. Trust that God knows what he's doing, even though the process of pruning can be painful. And it can also be fruitful in the hands of the divine who? The divine gardener, the guy with the green thumb, Jesus. I am so thankful for him. Let's pray. Lord, you are a God of mercy and a God of grace. Lord, in so often, I remember Pastor Coleman always used to say this, grace plus something is, is, it, is nothing. If you add something to grace, it's not grace. We get all confused. Lord, you want to prune us back and you want us to understand your word. You want us to hear you. You want us to really to desire the pruning. Maybe even to recognize the areas and say, Lord, please begin to prune this area of my life. So that I become more fruitful, that I would become, you know, you know, more accessible to people, uh, Lord, become closer to you, Lord. That's what we want, Lord, to be closer to you, Lord. I pray each and every one of us today would pray, Lord, just that, to get on our knees and say, Lord, help me to be closer to you. I know it doesn't feel good to be cut down, as that avocado tree was cut down in my backyard, but Lord, it's feeling pretty good today. It's feeling pretty good. I thought I guarantee you that if that avocado tree could talk, it would have said, Ouch, you just cut me all off. I've got no green growth growing. How am I going to sustain myself? Oh my gosh, you killed me. Sometimes we feel that way. Lord, may we understand that you are just pruning back. Just like that tree, we'll find out. That by the pruning, we're going to grow many more branches. By uniting with, with UBC, we are, going to, we are going to get pruned back. The top of the tree is going to be cut off. UBC and GJCC are going to be united as one. A new identity. In a new place. Under new leadership. And Lord, that that pruning, when we look back, I pray we're going to see the same thing that I see in our, my avocado tree, that it's all bushy and growing and looking healthier than ever. Not one stem with a few branches 
forking off the main stem, but a bunch of little branches growing together in a, in a, in a, in a all together, rounded and, and beautiful. A Lord ready to bear much fruit. Lord, may we embrace the pruning in our lives. May we embrace the pruning of Grace Journey Community Church. Uh, Lord, and Lord, may we embrace the pruning as we enter into a partnership with the UBC. Lord, to grow and to become relevant in our community. Father, we thank you and we praise you. In, need, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand for our final song?